guys, it's Cherish from The Motley News uh, here today to talk to you about going to the doctor and feeling patient shamed. Has anybody felt like that recently? Apparently this happens more to women than it does men. In a study from, I think, the University of California, San Diego in 2009, they found that 59% of women left the doctor's office feeling shamed rather or compared to 39% of men who left the doctor's office feeling shamed. And this is a problem because with shame comes uh, certain things like avoidance. You don't want to go back to the doctor. Or if you do go back to, back to the doctor, you lie to your doctor about some things. And here are some things that women tend to lie about when they go to the doctor, if they ever do again. Uh, they lie about sexual partners, their weight. Well, you can't really lie about your weight, but your eating habits, your smoking habits, your drinking habits. We lie about all of that. Why do we do that? Because we've had some experience in the past that has dictated the way we want to interact with our doctor. I read a really interesting article from Women's Health. It was in the August issue of this year. Um, very fascinating stuff, very disheartening. Um, apparently women lie about those things because they have felt some type of fat shame, uh, sexual partner shame. There were many different anecdotes. Um, one in particular that made me so angry was a transgender woman goes to the doctor and um, the first thing out of the doctor's mouth is, when's the last time you've had a pelvic exam? And of course this transgender woman says, well, there's no need for that. In fact, if you had read my chart, you would know that I have no cervix. The doctor, instead of saying, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, she says, wait, you're a man? You're a man trying to become a woman? And of course, that just led to this particular woman saying, Nope, I'm done. I don't know if I can go back to that doctor. I don't think I can. I don't know if I can go back to any doctor. That is dangerous because she definitely needs to go to the doctor, but it's how she was treated that dictates how she's going to interact with any other doctor for the rest of her life. And that's a shame. Um, I can tell you from my own experience, I have gone to the doctor and felt ashamed of something and um, I last year I had a doctor's appointment uh, with a new doctor I didn't really know her this was kind of a feeling her out situation she was very late um, they usually are doctors you know they have a lot of work they see their patients very quickly you don't know how many appointments they have in a given day but when she did show up, she accepted a personal phone call on her cell phone. She didn't apologize for taking it. She just told the person, I'm with a patient right now. Uh-huh. Okay. Sure. Got it. Hung up, did not apologize, but just went on to interrogate me <laughs> for why I was there. And I was there because I had recently quit smoking. I needed tips to continue cessation, secession. And um, also I was having a really hard time sleeping. The first thing she said to me when I said I'm having trouble sleeping was, well, you're not getting Ambien from me. I won't do it. <laughs> and I, I said, okay, <laughs> like, I, I'm sorry. She's like, it's highly addictive and I just do not feel comfortable with it. And I said, fair enough, um, that's fine. I asked her, well, you know, I'm doing pretty good about not smoking. I've been smoke free for, I don't know, five months or something. And uh, 
I just want to know, like, how do I keep this ball rolling? And because some days are worse than others, you know, I really want to light up, especially when I'm grading papers. She said, oh, that's easy. We'll just put you on Chantix. And I said, oh, no, I don't know if I can do that. Um, I was doing some reading about Chantix, and apparently some of the symptom or uh, side effects are, you know, crazy vivid nightmares, insomnia, depression, and suicide. And she said, oh, you people are always reading something and thinking you know more than the doctor. And when she said that, I was like, whoa, what do you mean you people? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I've been researching for quite a while that's what you do when you embark on a new thing in your life. You do some research. And also, I'm a grad student who takes research very seriously. Also, what do you mean by you people? <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't make the assumption that I knew more than she did. I do still have a little bit of white coat fear and anxiety. Like, you are the authoritarian with the white coat. You know what's going on. But what I didn't want to do was start taking a medication that might alter my brain. So basically, uh, that was how that visit went. And when I got home, I thought, I feel like I've been attacked today. She did not work out very well for me because when I found out that she had not uh, sent over one of my medications, which was an asthma inhaler, which I definitely needed. Uh, I called her up and she said, well, I did it already, so I don't know what you're saying. And I said, well, my pharmacist says that she doesn't have that order. And if you could, could you just send it through again? And she said, I'm not going to send it again because I already did it the first time. So I don't know what you're, what do you want exactly? And I said, well, actually, since we're on the subject of what I want, I wish that you had better si bedside manner. And the last time that I was with you, I felt like things did not go very well for me. Then she started screaming at me, saying that um, <laughs> my, my patients love me. I never get any a point or a complaints. And if you have a problem with me, you don't have to see me anymore. That would be better for the both of us. And then she hung up on me. <laughs> so that was the end of that. But I'm not going to lie. It did make me timid about wanting to see the next doctor. Because I thought, is it me? Um, and I'm thinking it was just her. Uh, but I do wonder if she saw a black woman coming in asking for, um, you know, a high class drug. I totally just uh, was blindsided. So these lies that we tell, these doctor's appointments that we don't make anymore because we're scared, something about that has to change. You have to go to the doctor. But can I advise that when you go to the doctor, step into the room with a backbone and make sure everything is heard. Um, ask all the questions you want. And if you feel like something hasn't been clarified, ask them to repeat themselves. Ask them to draw it out for you. Take notes. I mean, this is your health that you're worried about. This is something huge and uh, nobody's gonna care about it quite like you do. Um, so, you know, do your best to be honest, but if you feel like you're coming under attack, I would advise you to just say, well, I see what you mean and I understand I need to lose weight, I need to cut back on smoking, or I need to drink less, but the way you're saying it makes me feel like, you know, makes me feel like shit and maybe you could frame this in a better way or I don't know if I can be if I can continue seeing you and also get a second opinion I mean if you can afford it if you know of anybody else who has a better doctor than you 
definitely seek them out and talk to them as well. Talk to them about the treatment that you got the last time you went to the doctor and ask them, are you the kind of doctor that will sit with me and talk about the issues that I have and not be so judgmental? Because um, another interesting thing that I was reading about the the need for um, second opinions was when it came to heart attack diagnosis. Um, in women, apparently it's very difficult for doctors to diagnose a heart attack. And this might be a lot of um, illnesses that women have, chronic or sudden, but women who go to the emergency room complaining of chest pains, nausea, pressure, indigestion, tingling, um, shooting pain in their jaw, neck, and arm. They've been called just hysterical women. No, we don't say hysterical anymore. This isn't the Victorian age. We say she has anxiety issues. Meanwhile, women are having heart attacks left and right, and doctors are not doing the correct uh, tests on women. They're not doing that. Instead, they're calling it anxiety, indigestion, or menopause, and then they send these women home to have heart attacks on their own time, whereas men will probably be admitted and run through a whole series of blood tests and you know, stuff like that, because it's assumed that men have more heart attacks. I'm not sure where we get that, but women, women have just as many heart attacks as men. Apparently the symptoms just show up in different ways. Why doctors are not quick to spot them or don't take the time to spot them is very strange to me. That might be a whole other episode. So if you have felt shamed, please uh, join in on the discussion because this is really interesting. This, this is our health. Um, it's interesting and it's important. Um, if you feel like you've, you know, left a doctor's office with less confidence <laughs> than when you walked in, that's a, that's an issue and you might need to stand up for your rights as a patient. Women go to the doctor and when you do, stand up for yourself, ask questions, uh, get all the answers that you can because doctors don't generally have a whole lot of time to sit and talk with you. So do all of that and just take care of your bodies, okay? Um, until next time, I will, uh, I guess, bid you adieu. Bye!